Welcome to the course, How to Get a Killer Vocal Sound. My name is Gary Gray. I'm a producer who's worked in the Hollywood and LA area for the last 30 years. The course is going to cover three main areas. One is the philosophy of vocal recording, production, mixing, and mastering. Two, your priorities. And three, the steps to take in order to carry those priorities out. Let's get right into it. All right, you'll see here that we have a song that I'm in the middle of actually producing. It's called Hearts in Memphis, and it's by actually a member of How to License Your Music Premium.com, Ron Kempton, a student of mine and a client. So this is a great song. It's um, acoustic guitar centric. It's um, using a vocalist who is a professional singer and who was hired by Ron. So and he sent me the stems. So let's talk about the philosophy of how to get a killer vocal sound. All right. In Memphis. Just stop this for a moment. I wanted you to get a feel for the song in the background here. All right, let's talk about the philosophy of how to get a killer vocal sound. There are two hats that anyone in a studio wears, know it or not, when you're actually working on music production. Now, most people actually wear only one of those hats, from my observation, and doing this for 30 years and teaching for 30 years. Okay, the two hats are producer and engineer. Back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and earlier, you know, there was always two people, a producer and an engineer. And that's because of all the things that had to be done with tape machines and outboard gear. And there was a lot of work that had to be done, even editing. You know, you had to take the tape off the reels and use a razor blade and tape. And there was lots of work for the engineer to do while the producer worked with the artists. Now, with computers, uh, everything's instant. You know, recall is instant. You know, you don't have to set up a session. It just, you boot it up and there it is. What happened was when computers came along, the job of the engineer and the producer became kind of one. You could do both. Now, most people in their home studios and even in professional studios, when they're behind the board or behind their computer, they're wearing the hat of engineer. Now, the engineer is the guy with his nose on the screen that goes down rabbit holes, that fixes things, that edits things, that mixes things, that has fun working with the details and the nitty gritty stuff. And it can be a lot of fun. I mean, it can, you know, it can almost be addictive sometimes. I mean, you know how time goes by, right? Here's the problem, is that you're wearing two hats, know it or not, like I said. The other hat is producer. So what's the producer compared to the engineer? And this has a lot to do with vocal production, besides all production. The hat requires one to be able to sit back, look at the big picture, make big decisions, and be objective about the entire process of what's going on. So the producer doesn't go down those rabbit holes. Right? He stays away from them. And he tries to grab the engineer by the scruff of the neck and pull his head out of those rabbit holes every once in a while. I mean, sometimes he's got to go down there to get stuff handled. But mostly, the producer is there to keep the entire project on the rails, moving forward, and keeping the best interest of the entire project, the big picture in mind. So I'll give you an example. Here we're talking about vocal production. Okay, so this was a, a song that was sent to me with stem files. And so the first thing I had to do was bring up the stem files, get a decent balance on a, a rough mix, and listen. And the first thing I'm going to listen to because it's a song with a singer, is the singer, okay? Not just the vocal. See, the engineer is going to listen to the vocals, like the vocal track. He's going to go, okay, what can I do with the vocal track? The producer listens to the singer. And the first big picture, big decision that's made is this. Is this singer good enough? Now, some of this might sound a little brutal, but... The producer's got to be there. He has to be a leader, and he has to make the big, brutal calls. So is this singer good enough to make a professional presentation of this song to the degree that he's going to move the listener emotionally, and he's going to actually cause the listener to get lost in the song, get emotionally moved, have a story told, get chills? You know, is this singer good enough on this song to create that result? Okay, 
So let's take a listen to this one. Let's take a look at it from the viewpoint of the producer. All right, so here we go again. Here we go. This is after a rough mix I set up, at least. Sun sits down on Union Class of 55 reunion Okay, that's all I needed to hear. When I heard this, I was into it. I wanted to hear more. The singer was, it's, you know, it's not just that it, it is the quality of his voice good. Is he singing the right notes? That's not what I mean, not just technically. Emotionally, he was actually moving me and like it was appropriate for this style. And that's a decision that you have to make. Now, some of us, and I've done it myself, though I'm not, you know, normally a lead vocalist, I have sung lead vocals. I do a lot of background vocals. I mean, somehow I even won, <laughs> I won a, a, a song contest, a singer-songwriter category for a song that I sang on. And a lot, to be honest with you, a lot of it is just how I produced it. But most of it was I got into it emotionally, even though I'm not a great singer. So you don't have to use or be a great singer, but you do have to put out an emotional, a great emotional performance. And I would say this is a great emotional performance. So that's the first thing about vocal production is the knowledge of the hat that needs to be worn more than the other hat. That's producer, more than engineer. And the willingness, you know, to actually wear that hat. Now, the engineer would listen to that. Once the producer says that the vocal is good, the engineer will then take that track and work with it. But even as he's working with it, every once in a while, the producer's got to show up. See, here's the problem. Usually, the producer's not there. What I mean is the person, as I said before, is just wearing the engineer hat. So... The engineer's got to show up. You got to kind of pull yourself, your nose off the screen, step back and be the producer and go, okay, where's this project going? How's this going here? And, you know, maybe even halfway through that project, you still have to say, is this singer the right singer? How are we going here? You know, the engineer would never say that. You go, I'll fix it, man. I'll make this sound great. You know? So the engineer hat is more technical. It gets in there in more detail and... The producer has to look at the big picture. Okay, so we've got that. Okay, so the philosophy was this, basically. The philosophy of good vocal production is that there must be a producer present in the room along with the engineer. The engineer can't run this whole thing. You usually will not end up with an optimum vocal track if you're just being the engineer. Or if the person you're working with, you know, that you've hired or that you're using to be your producer engineer is only being an engineer. You can also use, you know, the traditional producer and engineer, two people. And if that's the case, just make sure the producer is being the producer. Okay? All right, so we talked about the philosophy. And I said we would cover the priorities and the steps. So now let's go over priorities. Priority number one. We've already covered this a bit. And that's the singer. Okay, so the philosophy was make sure there's a producer and an engineer present. And the priorities, priority number one, is the singer. The singer, if it's not the right singer for the track, then the producer has to say either we redo it or we get another singer. As simple as that. Okay, priority number two. And by the way, these priorities, as I'm giving them to you, are the steps that you take in vocal production. You don't have to follow these steps exactly, but I'm presenting to you a workable method definite workable method of getting radio-ready vocal tracks, okay? Okay, priority number two is A-being. A-being means comparing A to B. It's using a reference track so that you can compare what you're doing and you're not flying blind. This is probably one of the biggest mistakes made for people who are struggling or not consistent with getting radio-ready mixes, especially vocal production. So I'm going to show you right now how you can A-B in terms of vocal production. So I have up here a, uh, an arranger track, and this is in Cubase. You can set this up in any DAW. I use an arranger track here in Cubase, and here's how you do it. So I've turned on the arranger track, and it's gonna play. I'm gonna bring this out so you can see it. 
There's A here and B. You can name these or number them or letter them or whatever. You draw on these uh, actual events and then the arranger track will follow them one right after the other. So A, if you go down here, let's see where it's up, there it is, is a reference track. And this is John Mayer Daughters for this track. Okay, and then B goes to a specific section of my track where there's vocals. And in this John Mayer track, you've got uh, vocals there. I'm going to pull it down so we can pull it down by the work better, right by the vocals here, so we can see all this. All right, so here we go. I know a girl, sun sits down on Union. I know a girl, sun sits down on Union. Now a girl, sun sits down on Union. Okay, when I first set up this mix, the way that I got to a pretty decent mix quickly, you know, within about an hour, with all this stuff, I even added a bass track, and I don't know, what did I do in here? Let's take a look. I added a bass, and then I just selected key stems, and did, you know, a bit of, of vocal production already. Uh, but we're not done, but, you know, I got something that was halfway decent to start with. And I'll show you what I did. But these uh, tracks, were able, I was able to get to this point quickly because I was a being. And it's the, you know, I found it's the number one thing that people can get lazy about. And the reason I say that is I teach a being. You know, I came up with all these different ways to a b and processes and curriculums of a being and... And if I sometimes are, you know, have the attitude like, well, no, I don't need A-B right now. I know it happens to other people, okay? So it's a discipline. And when you keep it in, whenever I keep A-B-ing in and I keep it, using it during mixing and mastering, I get stuff done fast. The quality is radio ready. I get approvals. I get licensing. I make money. People are happy. You know, the frustration goes away. So A-B, okay? All right. Now, this is one way to A, B, so we literally just did A and then B here. And now, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you something that I developed called a duet A, B. So off to the right of my session, I set up the reference track, which is here. And I'm just putting my left and right locators right over this little section. And I took my lead vocal track. Now, let's go to the left and let's take a look at this lead vocal track over here. See, it's, I'm gonna highlight it. You see all that? The lead vocals, and I have little snippets of lead vocals here. Well, I took them from the actual song. So I just copied some of this over here to the right. Let's get over there. Right there. This is actually copied from the song and I'm using the actual tracks where my lead vocals are. And you'll notice, I'll go into detail with this, but I have these uh, vocal tracks uh, doubled up and sometimes more than doubled up. I'll show you why. So I'm going to turn the lead, my lead vocal tracks off right now and just show you the reference track section that we're going to play here in this part. Okay, so let's just hit play, starting right there. Let's go up here. We have to turn off the arranger track. Okay. Now we're going. Girls become lovers who turn into mothers. So mothers be good to your daughters too. Girls. Okay, so that's a loop. Now here's what I discovered. I discovered this way, came up with this way of using the process of A being to do something really interesting, and that is to add your lead vocals from your song into the reference track, like a duet. That's why I call it duet AB. And it's an amazing process because, now, make sure that you understand this about ABing. ABing doesn't mean matching. Some people think, now, unless you want to match something, if you like the breathiness of a vocal, the range of the vocal, you want to match it, okay, then go for it. ABing is comparing. Even when you're matching, you're still comparing, but mainly you're comparing. So like for instance, 
The singer that I have on this track that I'm mixing, he doesn't have as light and airy a voice as the reference, but I still like the production of the reference, the vocal production. So I'm using a singer that has a little bit more dark and lower range, but I like to get these different aspects and I'm comparing my vocal to that vocal. So the duet AB is basically taking your vocal track after you've matched the volumes. I've already done that. So the volumes of the reference track I've actually pulled, see this? I've pulled the volume down to minus 7.23 to match the volume of my mix. When I'm A being and mastering, I'm not going to change the volume or anything about my reference track because I'm trying to get my master up to that master. But if I have a commercially mastered track that I've pulled into my mix and I'm using it as a reference, then I need to take that reference track and bring it down to the volume of my mix and here's a little trick. See this kind of frown EQ here? What I've done is, uh, you see, I've brought the volume down from zero down here, again, to minus 7.23. And I've shaved a little bit off of the low end and the high end. Why? Because it's basically reverse engineering a commercially mastered track and making it into its previous form of mix. It's like the pre-mastered mix. It's a, it's a way that you can approximate what that song sounded like in the mixing stage. Because what happens when we master? Well, what happens when we master is it gets louder and normally the lows and the highs come up a bit from the mastering process. So to reverse engineer it, bring the volume down, shave a little off the low and the high end, and now you're using apples versus apples. You have something closer to to compare. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the little bits of lead vocal that I pulled into here. And this is kind of an art. You, sometimes, you know, you have to find the right reference track too. And I'll just say one thing about it before we move on. And it's probably the most important thing I'll say, really, in this, in this uh, particular course, or any course. The reference tracks, plural, tracks, this is one of them. The reference tracks that you choose to compare your song so you can see where you stand in terms of being viable and the quality matching something that's radio ready, those tracks that you choose are really the most important thing in your entire project. Choosing the right tracks. Sometimes people don't do it at all. Good luck. Um, and then those that do, Sometimes they don't spend enough time and care on finding the right tracks. You can go to websites now where you can find tracks that match your key, BPM, and they'll list them all out. And you can try them so that they become a little more musical when you try something like this. And it's just a more musical process when you're actually A-Bing. So, what I did was I found some snippets, some phrases of the lead vocal from my mix, and I fit them in to the reference track in a musical way and like a duet. So I could then tweak my vocals to match as if I had to do a remix of that commercial recording with a new singer singing a duet. Now I'm going to play it without the reference, just a little snippet so you'll hear which parts of our song are playing. It goes like this. Harmony, season flow to Jaspos. Okay, so I found those two phrases, and now I'm going to play it all together. And this is going to be the duet AB. Check this out. A great tool to get excellent vocal production. Girls become lovers Who tell listen to so mothers So mothers be good to your daughters Who's just boys Girls become lovers Who tell listen to so mothers So mothers be good to your daughters Who's just boys Girls become lovers Who tell listen to mothers So mothers 
be good to your daughters. Just both. You'll never hear your favorite reference tracks the same again. So this is an amazing tool. It's something I just discovered actually kind of by accident one day. And I tried it, you know, I tried to match in there and I went back to my song and it was so much better, the quality, and it went so much faster. So now we go back to our song. All right, and I'm going to set my locators here. So we're back here. So I'm going to go over the other AB um, method again right now. And that's just a standard AB, but it's utilizing markers so that you can just get to the sections you need to quickly. So let's just listen to that again. Okay. Here we go. I know a girl Sun sits down on Union I know a girl Sun sits down on Union Okay, excellent. So once you've got that, you know, kind of squared away and in the ballpark, um, now you'll keep going back there if you're smart and you'll just keep getting it closer and closer. So let's take a look now at the next priority. Okay, the next priority has to do with three aspects of your vocal track. The first is timing, so the rhythm of the singer. And it doesn't need to be robotically on the grid, but it does need to be rhythmically pleasing, okay? So the first in this particular priority, this priority has three steps to it. And what it is, is three aspects of the vocal performance. And again, the first one is timing, rhythm. The second one is volume. Certain notes, certain, you'll actually see even transients and plosives and S's, T's, P's, B's, um, the volume even of those smaller units of the words, even breaths, okay? That's the second of these three elements of the vocal performance. So again, first is rhythm, which is timing. The second one is volume. And the third is tuning. So if a vocalist is just too out of tune, I mean, if you're doing rap or if you're doing pop and, you know, R&B and stuff, you, you can just go to town and just, you know, do the extreme auto-tuning. That's correct, you know, for that style. In this style here, I chose this style because there's not a lot of music going on, so you can hear the vocal production. But, you know, I work in all styles. So if we were doing a pop song now, you know, I'd be doing some drastic auto-tuning. Here, I'm just listening for, and here's what's key, what you're listening for. Okay, when you're doing the tuning of vocals, you're listening for anything that's out of tune enough to create an emotional drop while you're listening to the song. You're not trying to get everything perfectly in tune. Okay, but you don't want it so out of tune. You know, you can't say, well, I like it. It's, it's, it's kind of cool there. Well, it might be kind of cool, but it also might be, for the listener, it might be pulling them out of the song because they're like, like even tone deaf people, like it's interesting. I don't know if I've met an actual tone deaf person. I've met people that have been trained more than others to hear what's in tune. But even a quote tone deaf person, when something is out of tune enough, they, they can't tell you what it is that's not right, but they can tell you something is not right. So it's really important to listen as an average listener. We call that Iowa ears, just listening with Iowa ears. Okay. So here, um, when I got this particular track, I listened for timing. Timing was very good. Let's just listen for timing here. Okay. Sun sits down on Union. Class of 55 reunion. Good. So many times I, I don't get tracks this good for timing. This is actually pretty exceptional. So as we move along on the course, if we find something, I'll show you that we'll change it. Next is volume. So if we do our A, B again, I want you to listen for the volume of our mix of each and every aspect of the words, the breaths, the sibilances, S's, T's, anything, anything that's volume, too loud, too soft, how does it compare, how does it average out? 
So let's listen for volume. I know a girl Sun sits down on Union I know a girl Sun sits down on Union Okay, so here's what I hear here. Uh, the first words are Sun sits down on Union. And let me get this. All right. So sets it down on union, and let's listen to the volume of that phrase. Sun sits down on union. So down on union is definitely loud enough. Down on union. Listen to that. Sun sits down on union. Sun sits. Let's go in there, and let's raise that a bit. Okay, I'm raising that. Sun sits down on too much. It's just coming like right in your face. Sun sits down on union. Okay, so it's better, but it should be raised all the way from one word to the other. I, I heard a drop in there in between the words, so I'm moving that over. Sun sits down on union. That's better. I'm going to crossfade it. Sun sits down on union. It's a little bit too loud. A little unnatural. Try there. Sun sits down on union. Okay, that's not bad. And I'll show you what we're going to do to actually make it even better. But it's better than it was. Okay, let's compare those again. You're using A being as a tool constantly. I mean, it's just, it's a great way to save time and keep your quality up. I know a girl Sun sits down on union okay, I'm going to take it down a little bit, I just a hair. Know a girl The sun sits. Sun sits down on union Just a hair more. I know down. a girl Sun sits down on union Okay. I can understand the words. I can feel the emotion. It's the first thing you hear in the song. It's important. Sun sits down on union. Okay, another mistake that's made um, by vocal producers or anyone doing vocal production, and that is, okay, now we're doing these little loops here, and that's okay because we're A-being, or maybe we're working on something over and over. Big mistake, keeping your attention and focus on a small loop and not listening and feeling the flow of your song. I'm going to tell you right now uh, my definition of a finished track, because that's what we're going for. A finished track is a track that has no emotional weak links for the listener from the first note to the final moment of silence in that track. So all the way through. In order to achieve that standard, the producer and engineer have to, by definition, listen through the whole song. Now, <laughs> you would be surprised how many people working on music production, now check this out, how many people never, I'm not kidding you, never listen to their track from the beginning to the end, which is kind of preposterous, right? You don't believe it. Think about it for a minute. Just seriously, look back. How many times have you listened to your track during production and right after you're done from the first moment? Like, I mean listening carefully, like even for, with the headphones for pops, clicks, buzz, hum, sibilance, static, distortion, right? I mean, that's not why we're listening, but that's how closely we're listening. Why we're listening is for the emotional contact, the soul of the music. Okay, are there any emotional drops? But a click or a pop or a distortion or a hum can be bad enough to create an emotional drop. And so, of course, we have to be professional. We don't want any of those in there. And there might be, you know, a little click in a track that's right on a snare drum. I'm not going to spend time fixing it if I can't hear it. I'm talking about things that happen in your track that cause an emotional drop, okay? So if what we're going for is the definition of a finished track, again, which is 
No emotional weak links for the listener from the first note to the final moment of silence. That tells us at once that flow of music will tell us if there's an emotional drop. And you can't feel or hear the flow if it's a small little loop. Oh, that becomes like a song. And if, you know, do you ever notice that? You loop over and over and over and you're like, hey, that's kind of cool. And everything sounds great. And then when you go back to the beginning of the song and listen to this thing that you worked on for a few hours, sometimes it sounds like crap because it sounded cool on its own, but it doesn't flow with the song. So here we go. You got my point. We're going to go from the beginning now. Listening to the flow and the volume of these vocals. Let's see how. It's the first words in the song. It's important. Sun sits down on Union 